In the last movie, we saw how to install Ruby, but there's one more component of that that we need to install, which is the dev kit. Let's see how to do that. You can find out more information about dev kit and how to install it by going to github.com slash one click Ruby installer. That's the repository for the Ruby installer. And then on their wiki under development kit, you can find out information. And it explains to you what DevKit is. It's a toolkit that makes it easy to build and use native C and C++ extensions for Ruby on Windows. So simply put, it means that when we start downloading Ruby gems and it wants to compile those into native C extensions that we can use, that way they'll be optimized for speed, then we're going to need DevKit. We're going to need the compilers and things that come inside DevKit. So that's why we need to add it. And the way that we get that is from the Ruby installer. So we'll switch back to the Ruby installer website, rubyinstaller.org. We'll go to download, and you'll see that underneath the Ruby installers that we installed already, if we scroll down, you'll see that there's three development kits here that we can download. There may be more or less at different points in time in the future. And to determine which one, it depends on which version of Ruby we installed. You can see up here, it talks about which development kit, and it says that the correct one to download is the one that matches the version of Ruby we downloaded. For me, that was Ruby 2.0.0 with x64. So if that's the version I picked, then I need to pick this version of the dev kit. If you downloaded something different, you'll want to get one that matches for you. So I'm going to come down here to the dev kits, and here's the one that matches for mine. I'll click on that. It'll come up and ask me if I want to save the file. I'll say yes. And then Firefox will proceed to download it. When it's done, we can just click on this folder, and it will open up our downloads folder where we can see it, and then we can just run it says, would you like to run it? We'll say, yes, that's okay. Where would you like to extract it to? Now, this is a very important choice because by default, it's going to extract all of these files into my downloads directory, and that's not what I want. I want to change this so that instead it simply says dev kit with a capital D and a capital K, no spaces. So that's where I'm going to put it. So I'll hit extract, and it will create that folder for me and extract all of these files into there. Once the extraction is done, you can close your downloads folder. The steps that we're going to follow to install are actually listed here on the wiki. So you can scroll down and you can find those in case they change in the future. But we've already extracted the files. What we're starting with now is these steps here. And I'm going to walk you through those, but I just wanted you to see that they are there on the wiki as well. So in order to run these, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our command prompt. We're going to change directories into that root directory dev kit that we just created. Oops, let me try that again, backslash dev kit. There we are. Now that I'm in that directory, if I do dir, we can see the listing of what's in there. Now what we need to do is type a couple of commands to get things configured properly. So ruby space dk.rb init. So space and then init. And then that will generate a config.yml file for us. We can take a look at that again with dir. We can see that that file is right here, config.yml. That's a YAML file. And so what we're going to do is type type, the actual word type, T-Y-P-E space config.yml. And you'll see what Ruby versions it found for us. So that's what's here. If we wanted additional Rubies, then we would list those as well. But it found our Ruby version, so that's okay. That's what we wanted it to do. Now we just type Ruby dk.rb install. Before we typed init, now we're going to type install, and that will install DevKit to enhance our installed version of Ruby. The way that we can test whether this worked correctly and whether we have the necessary extra code that we're going to need to build these gems is to try one. So install, when we'll try JSON gem dash dash platform equals Ruby. And JSON should install for us. And you should see it come up in the messages and say with native extensions while it's installing. So there it is, temporarily enhancing path to include DevKit building native extensions. That's the key part that we wanted to see. And as the wiki notes, we can actually try out using that gem by using Ruby dash Ruby gems dash E, and then in quotes, putting require single quote JSON, semicolon puts JSON load and 42 in square brackets, inside single quotes, close parentheses, and inspect. What we're doing is just writing a bit of Ruby code to try it out. And sure enough, it came up and returned 42 to us. So that lets us know that JSON 
is working. So it was able to go out and get the JSON gem, compile it correctly using our dev kit, and we were able to then use the result of what it created for us. So we know that it's working. Those commands that I typed there at the end to test are what they recommend here in step five. So if that changes and they recommend using something else, then you'll just want to refer to this to find out the best way to test your installation.